Okay, so this is a very different episode for us. In this episode, we're just going to talk about how to emotionally prepare for the last season of Game of Thrones. I'm Sienna. And I'm Toast. We're partners in love, life, and music. And we've been together since 2001. With each episode of this podcast, our goal is to help our fellow LGBT community members lift their lives to the next level. Hey, everyone. It's coming. <laughs> the last season is coming. Uh, okay. So, first... We have to set and ex- and give the disclaimer that we're not we're not true hard fans. geeks. Well, we're fans because we well, buy you're a bigger fan. You're a we bigger buy fan. HBO now when the season comes around. Oh, just so we can see that. Just so yeah. we can watch it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't think that's for you know. I don't think that's to be taken so lightly. Okay. Okay. Right? You're going to give but, yourself points for that. But we don't go. Well, for a while I went on some blogs, but we don't actively seek out the blogs to find out more information. Mm-hmm. We have watched the uh, commentaries on episodes and such. So I think the fact that we haven't missed any seasons mm-hmm. and that we're excited for this last season, mm-hmm. I think we're fans. Yeah. But we're not the die hard like that can tell you the errors in each episode and the deeper analytics of no and symbolism. We are not that. Okay. Yeah. But we're I'm I would say we're, we're grade like, C fans at the most, right? I think you are then. Oh, okay. okay. I am not okay. a C fan. Right. Okay. Oh my god! Definitely not at the well, A list level. Well, I nor am the surprised. B list level. What? 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 I think you're like a. I think okay. If if an A plus fan is someone who who like maybe I would say that's the person that dresses up. Okay, right? <laughs> okay, that dresses up. Okay, okay. <laughs> In the outfit. I'm not talking the, about fan merchandise. No. I'm talking about, yeah. yeah. So, like they um, make their own costumes. Right. Yeah. And okay. they participate okay. in community. They go to the theme park. Yes, stuff yes, yes, or whatever. yes. Yeah. The theme things. Mm. Um, or in lieu of that, they just have a, a level of analysis mm-hmm. on each episode that goes deeper than what okay okay you know. so that's a i think plus. that's an a plus okay all right okay. right i think i could be a b plus okay i'm an average so, so, fan so you're confident in your knowledge of the game of thrones universe to the point that you feel you would be able to keep up and understand a conversation among the a plus people no Oh. No, because I think A plus people are at that level where it's a it's an exclusive club. Right. A plus needs to speak to other A plus people. Right. Maybe and you can't participate in the conversation, but you could listen okay, ho- and on. keep up and you understand. Bear so, is burning by the sea. <laughs> Bear the cat. But he can't tell yet oh, because no, he's so better. furry. Oh my gosh. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Bear was okay. by a heater, and Come we were in. afraid he was going to burst into Come flames in. because his fur was starting to get too close to those Never mind. coils oh. that are heating up. Okay, he's so left the room. Okay. So you can all tell right. this episode is going to be all over the okay. place. <laughs> we... Okay, wait, 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 wait. So you're saying, can I keep up with just what they're talking about? Yeah, you can understand. Okay, yeah, and you maybe. Can follow. It's like, right, yeah. yeah. I could like, you follow can't form it. You can't. You but can't. if they say, what do you think about the bop, 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 I probably couldn't. There you go. Yeah. I mean, so, I'd go, who's yes, that? That's what I mean. Who's hot pie? Yeah. I mean, you know, I'd be like, who is mm-hmm, that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I can't even remember. Like, <laughs> who can remember? You have to study in order to remember all of the characters and their you relationships and the history. And you need it's a ridiculous. chart. Ridiculous. Okay. okay. So, so we just had to give that disclaimer because yeah. if you are a hardcore fan, you're going to be like, oh, this was so unsatisfying. Well, you're going to be, we'll just say that any benefit for hardcore fans will be in kind of laughing at. Laughing at, at us. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Laughing so at they'll have fun. level of knowledge. Okay. So they that, may. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Hey, if they laugh at us, at least they're laughing. Um, um, 
but this is, you know, this is real. I mean, it's real in the sense that we have it in our calendars Mm -hmm. when the season is starting. We have the date as to when we are signing up for HBO now. We don't, we really don't use HBO. So it's like, except for Game of Thrones. So it's really a waste to have it when you, when there are so many channels available. It's ridiculous how many channels. Forget it. Okay. So now, so I just, we just have to say that. So, Mm -hmm. all right. So I'm getting so excited. I just have to relax a bit. (laughs) Wait, excited about the last season or excited about this episode? I'm getting excited about the topic. So I just have to. (laughs) Oh my gosh! I have to just take some breaths. Okay, you better take some breaths. <sighs> um, Maybe because Bear I will, almost I, caught on fire. Yeah, too, that's but. exciting. Okay, so I will ready. say the first tip to emotionally prepare for the last well, season of Game of no, Thrones. No, no, is no, about, you can't. No, no, what? Because we haven't set it up. We have to like. Okay, set I'll let the you stage. lead the conversation. Okay. So, Game of Thrones must have been about like season four or season five, season four or five. And it was, it was during that season. It was already on Mm -hmm. when we were given the first season as a a gift. On DVD. On DVD. Mm -hmm. And so Game of Thrones had been, had been going on for several seasons before we actually were introduced to it. And we were just like, oh, yeah, we've heard about that show, whatever. Mm -hmm. But my brother gave us the season as a gift. Mm -hmm. And then we thought, okay, let's watch it. Mm -hmm. First episode, we were so confused. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for the handy chart that comes with the DVDs, and if it wasn't for the subtitle capabilities of our television we wouldn't we wouldn't have made it that's through right. the first episode that's right yeah there was a family tree which we kept having to refer yeah. to we had to pause and look back like who is oh that oh and it must have been halfway through the first episode where we just had to stop and say i cannot understand these people <laughs> turn on the damn <laughs> captions because I can't understand what they're saying. So it, it's really, when you take those two things together, yeah, not understanding what their characters are saying <laughs> and not understanding who the characters are, it really... We persevered. It, it's a miracle <laughs> that we even gave a flying fig yeah. about where the story even went after the first season. But I know. obviously... We did. After watching all we of did. the DVDs we in season one... We were hooked. Yeah. And Sienna spent part of her life <laughs> catching watching up. all the subsequent seasons that were available at that time. Now so I that, hung through it okay. so that but but so that I could catch up and go with the current season. Right. Right. Yeah. And I I kept up to a certain point. Yeah. I forget at which point I decided that your life was more important. Yes. Yeah. My time was more important, so what I was going to do was I just found some kind of synopsis type of website online, and I just kind of skimmed through to see what the heck happened. Uh, toast so, is yeah. not toast is not that visual, like um, yeah. <laughs> so so you didn't feel like well, it's such a loss no. from not seeing the scenes. You would rather no, read no. this is what happened and this is what happened. Like kind to of, you, I you're guess. just looking for I just the, the information. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So, okay. So that's, so that's our history. Story. And then we did. So we caught up in some fashion mm-hmm. in time to join the rest of the Game of Thrones family yeah. in real time as the yeah. next season rolled out on HBO now, which, yeah, we signed up for HBO now. The for that reason, yep. just in time, I think we signed up on the very day that the season premiere was to was to be streamed. Mm-hmm. And it caused somewhat of a panic when the sign-up process went awry. And we were kept getting error messages, and it wasn't working like as expected. And it was like 6.10, and, and the I, show starts at 6. And I went on Twitter to find out what the heck's going on. Are other people having this problem? And 
oh my gosh, you would have thought. Everyone was dying. Yeah. Y- you would have thought it was a national emergency. <sighs> and people were freaking out because they were having the same problem. So I was just like, you know what? Okay. So, so, the, so that leads us to our first tip. Can I say the first tip now? Yes. Okay. So the first tip is that if you are needing to sign up for HBO now so that you can watch the last season of Game of Thrones, then sign up early to avoid any emotional distress in the sign-up process. So what we would recommend at the very latest, sign up on April 1st to prepare (laughs) for the April 14th premiere. Now, that's two weeks. I understand. That's a lot. But you may want to use those two weeks to watch the last season of Game of Thrones. To catch yourself up because it's been a couple of years, right? <sighs> it has been so long. They really made us wait. I mean, talk about so, confidence in the franchise. They're like, ah, our people will wait. No yeah. problem. So you might want to do that. Um, I know I am going to do that. And um, that's also another way to emotionally prepare for this last season because you give yourself a little more, right? You're going to watch the other season and go into the last season. And this last season is going to be so different from the one prior because each episode is going to be movie length. So it's like an hour and a half. It's crazy. So it's very exciting. Okay, so we're going to get a lot. There's going to be so much to soak up and enjoy for this last season. So... Another tip is to make sure you block out all the dates for the episodes. Block out all those Sundays. <laughs> calendarize. Yeah, calendarize. That's what you're saying. Because, I mean, ideally, you want to be with everyone else watching it around the same time. Well, you okay. know, I think that's a huge part of the fun. Like, I think it is. once a, a thing, whether it's a TV show, whether it's a band, um, Once a thing reaches a certain critical mass of Mm -hmm. fandom, Mm -hmm. that just accelerates the excitement and the... It does. Right? And it adds to the experience. So I think that's the magic that Game of Thrones managed to to capture. And part of emotional preparation is really being able to soak up each moment and episode to its fullest. So in order to do that, Watch it in real time. Yeah. Because you will have that energy of everyone else watching in real time. Mm-hmm. Because also, if you watch it later, mm-hmm. God forbid you're on Twitter or you're on Instagram and you see a new meme mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. spoils it for you, that is not the way to go. Okay. That's kind of taking the anthropologist role of observing the fans. And that's a whole different kind of excitement. Probably that more is. up my alley. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing you can do is to to really maximize the season and to emotionally get the most out of it is to be prepared to budget in time to watch any behind the scenes. Those any, are my favorite. Any commentaries and even any spinoff, sh- like any shows by other companies and peoples that are going to discuss the episode you just saw. Mm. Like there was a show we used to watch yeah, on yeah. HBO that was... Um, Some kind of fan show. Yeah. It was fun, though. That was great. And, and, and I they, love all the behind-the-scenes stuff where they interview the cast and the yeah. director. But that's and the actually... Effects people. I, that's my favorite stuff. I love that. That's actually part of Game of Thrones. So pr- absolutely prepare to watch that. Mm-hmm. But I'm talking about, you know, those other shows. Not fan, by the Game of Thrones people. Fan co- fan created yeah. type of things? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So you might want to do that because I know <laughs> when we've watched it and they come up with some symbolism and all kinds of things, it's like, oh my, oh really? Oh, how interesting. Like, mm-hmm. it's interesting. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. So be prepared for that. Um, Shall I keep going? Those are kind of like the, you know, when the Olympics are on TV? Yeah. And then they create these little featurettes about the biography of certain uh, athletes. It's Mm -hmm. kind of like that. Yeah. 
All right. Yeah, sure. Go on. So go here on. is another tip. So around the la- when you hit ha- the halfway mark, you know, when you're about to enter into the last three seasons. Okay. That's when start following some of your favorite stars in the show. Now, if you are a top fan, you already will be. Oh, okay. Right. You already right, will be. Right. You're already following. Right. John Snow or whatever. But I would say just make sure you go to their account and you start looking and liking their stuff because then you'll see it more in your feed. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Right? Because okay. otherwise you All forget right. you follow so-and-so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? So start activating that okay. by so liking that you can, things. So that you can be shown more of it. So that you can be that shown right? more of it and okay. you start to truly create a separation of the actor and who they are and the character. <laughs> so, so that you're reminded of the difference between fantasy and reality. <laughs> Right? No, that's what you're saying, right? That John, but then that you can still enjoy, you know, even though you will never see Jon Snow again on mm-hmm. television, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? Right. There's not anything more to learn about Jon Snow. Okay. You can learn so much about Kit. Okay, yeah, that's the actor's name. Yeah. At first I was like, what? You can learn yeah, about okay. Kit, okay. see him eat ice cream. Is that kind of is that kind of um, stalkery and weird though? No, it's social media. Yeah, okay. You're just enjoying, you know, whatever he puts up there, it's kind of like, you know, that's for fans to enjoy. Right. right. So just make sure I think that helps the emotional preparation because you fall in love with the character. Mm-hmm. But there's an actor behind there. Yeah. Right? And it gives brought that craft to life. Yeah. Okay. And so you can really move your love of the character to the actual actor. And hopefully they're not an asshole. And you can hopefully. really find things that create even a genuine love mm-hmm. for that person mm-hmm. and the other things that they okay. do. Okay. So that's also another thing you can do. Okay. Okay. Another tip is after this last season is over, mm-hmm. you can choose to start all <laughs> over again, watch oh season one, and go through all the seasons to buy yourself emotional time to let go of this show. Okay, I have something, a comment about that one. <laughs> what? It's amazing to me how I, I okay i bet if if anybody goes back and starts watching from season one all over again mm-hmm. the level of uh shock value sex yeah and violence yeah will be super uh remarkable because i think those two that that's what um I think kind of sparked the conversation about Game of Thrones among people is because of all the sex and violence. I think. I mean, that's my theory. Well, they definitely used it in the beginning. Exactly. That's what I mean. And then after a few seasons, it it just kind of got toned down. Don't you think? Quite a bit. Yeah. Yep. And that's why I think it's so funny. Like, can I put in my own tip related here? This is your podcast. Okay. Okay. So here's my little sub tip. One way to create less emotional distress over the last season of Game of Thrones is to realize it's a freaking soap opera with burr, I'm, with bear fur, cloaks, <laughs> swords, and dragons. I mean, seriously. Like, it's a soap opera. It's, it's really funny to me where, like, because in soap operas, it's all about, like, oh, who's... Who turns out to be the villain, right? All those maneuverings and social things. And it's about people waking up from comas, like how Jon Snow came back to life. And it's about people... He wasn't in a coma. He actually died. I know, but it's the same idea. Well, people come back to life in soap operas, too. And it's about yeah, people but not who, from the Red Lady. who are lovers, who are related who turned out to be related <laughs> you know? so it's, it's it's so funny to me how it's a soap opera you know but you dress it up in this kind of edgy medieval grit that's all but i think you dun, know dun, okay. dun, 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 eh 
I admit I have that I have that theme song on my one of my favorite playlists. Well, okay. So, in, hey, hey, I just say it's a soap opera. That's all. Yeah, it's a soap <laughs> opera. But then I think if we were to really like dive in, it's an intelligent soap opera. There, it's fantasy, right? Exactly, I mean, it's exactly. fantasy, it's and I think dragons. Just, it's the it's the um, energy of fantasy mm-hmm. that really sparks something in us mm-hmm. when we watch it. Yes, you know so. I don't know how much we're watching as a soap opera, okay. but the, it's the fantasy that is just very um, invigorating. Yes, I think you it's know, an fantasy. Exciting. I think it's the I, I think it's the also the, the taboo even like <gasps> what brother and sister what you know you're <laughs> right, like right what right um, I think it's also and and this next element I'm about to talk about is also part of I think why Star Wars was so successful and why people have an attraction to superhero stories and universes I think it's the sense of a grand scope of history and of individual people's place within that history Hmm. like they were born into a time and into a family that has that is heavy with the weight of this kind of history mm. and the expectations that are placed on these individuals you know i i think that's a huge thing and i think okay. that people if you're hearing crackling that's noises bear. that's because bear our cat is rummaging through my recycle bin but i think in our contemporary society so much of the focus is on the individuals own life and you can do whatever you want as as an individual and it's all about Mm. what you want and instead of you were born into a certain family into a certain country and there are certain expectations and ideals that uh that are placed upon you and you have a responsibility within the scope of your lifetime Mm -hmm. to to fulfill you know Mm. certain duties and to bring about change within your society and and all that kind of stuff we don't our our contemporary lives don't so much have that heaviness on on them and that sense of grandness on them until recently i would say until the 2016 election woke everybody up Mm. and we kind of looked up and we're we're like holy bleep yeah like you know it and all of us had a wake-up call i mean yeah, I mean, in a very simplistic way, this story is exciting because it's another elaborate example of good versus evil. Exactly. Right? Right. Good versus evil. Mm-hmm. Who's going to win? Mm-hmm. Um, and not every. I think another part of the story that I really appreciate is it's not so cut and dry. Right. Right? And I, that I really is appreciate how that. it is. That's how life it's is. It's not so cut and dry. Exactly. You know, you yep. don't just throw a person out because it's like they did X, Y, Z. Mm. Well, I mean, I guess it depends what X, Y, Z is, but we're more complex. And I right. think that and people have the their characters, own individual motivations and reasons. And, and I think the characters really um, shine a light on that. Mm-hmm. The complexity yes. of, yes. you know, even if it's not literally what... What they're going through is not literally what we would all be going through. <laughs> right, <laughs> it's right. not like, you know, it still is the, it addresses the complexity of And the nuance and the layers of, of right and wrong. Well, I guess some of them thing, aren't right? human. Yeah. Well, anyways. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Very good, Toast. Um, okay. But what I will say, what I will say is that. Something else you can also do to emotionally cope is if you haven't read the books, you can move, you can move to, to the books I and have, read the books. Yes. And I bet, from what it sounds like, you'll get so much more. It'll just be so much more um, enriching for you to read the books. Mm-hmm. So that's something you can do. Also, too, you have to realize that from last season and this season, these seasons aren't based off of the books there's no books anymore like right. you know true. so you have to realize too that eventually if so if you have read the books and you you're watching all the seasons eventually there may be more books yeah what's the status of I the think book he's, thing i think he's still writing but they couldn't wait for him to write it but has he still not come out with an actual another yeah. book 
Right. Wow. Right. Wow. They couldn't, and so, so they had to just go and do their own thing. Yeah. So I'm just saying that even when the season ends, it really might not be over. The world. So kind of leave that space open. Yeah. You that know? universe. It might not be it, over. Yeah. It's okay? still there. Yeah. Okay. So okay. here's just a lot. Okay. So this show came along. There will be other shows. So I just want to say there will be other shows. Mm -hmm. So stay open. And can you imagine what that other show might be? Well, I have to see. Now we're revealing our less than A level fan status because I have to imagine that there's already like hard news about what other spinoff shows are in the works. Right? There's got to be. Oh, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. But what I will say is if you are looking for a spin-off quality, because, you know, spin-offs are never as good as what it's spinned off from, right? Okay, okay. So if you are looking for, like, spin-off quality, okay, not with the production. The production is amazing, but it's a whole different story, and the characters aren't as complex, for sure. Okay. But if you want that essence, you know... Just a, of the just swords a little and the bear fur twinkling capes. of the vibe. Mm -hmm. Watch the Last Kingdom. Mm. That's on. That's the BBC Hulu? production, no. right? It's a BBC series. Netflix. It's on Netflix. Yeah, okay. yeah. You can watch that. There are several seasons, but again, it's not as complex. Great production, but you will get your your fighting, your <laughs> animal, your kings and knights things. on horseback. Yeah. And yeah. You will get that. Um, I really enjoyed that series. I thought it was really good. And I resorted to it because I just felt like, when is Game of Thrones coming back on? And I needed a hit. So and it, I thought and that show was And it did the trick enough for you. Yeah, I remember. it was yeah. good. It was good. <sighs> so that, that uh, series might be a good weaning. Don't watch it now. But it might be a good <laughs> weaning after Game of Thrones is over. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So um, let's see. I think maybe the last thing we'll say is if you want to make it really fun, you can have some fun snacks. Mm -hmm. And it might be a lot to try and have all your fun snacks at every single, um, you know, episode. But mm -hmm. maybe for the finale, it's a lot of work. You might want to have some fun themed snacks. And so, if you are vegan, you could have um, like, you know, not it's not chicken, right? It's chick. It's chicken. Chicken. Yeah. <laughs> Little fingers. You can have that, right? Mm -hmm. You can have some Targaryen tacos. That might be fun. My, or, fa my favorite is a three-eyed raisin bran loaf. <laughs> <laughs> you could have that if you're like a cereal dinner person, mm -hmm. right? You could do a Lannister lasagna, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, you could do Jon Snow bastard brownies. Mm. That might be yummy, mm -hmm. right? With a dusting of powdered, powdered snow sugar on the top. Yep. Mm -hmm. Or in honor of Viserion, who is now a white walker dragon, mm -hmm. you could do like some chilled Viserion vodka. Mm. Like a drink. Maybe put some blueberries for the blue eyes. eyes. You know, something. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So you can really have some um, fun snacks for the finale. Mm -hmm. Maybe buy yourself a t-shirt. You know, if you are Targaryen, whatever, whatever mm -hmm. you are. House of Targaryen or whatever you are. Right, right. You can have that, sport that, invite people over and watch all together for a bonding moment. You can do that. And I will have to say, see, because they don't know this, but okay. I had I bought a whole bunch of Game of Thrones oh, yeah. themed items as gifts, partially as gifts. But I bought myself two Mother of Dragon shirts, mm -hmm. and um, it said it was delivered. We never got it. You know, I'm so sure that's sad. happened to other people. Isn't that and so they couldn't even replace my order because they sold um, out. They weren't making those things <gasps> from that season anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's very sad. So I'm not, um, well, maybe I'll sport a Mother of Dragons thing by then. But anyways, just saying. 
All right. Anything else we want to say? Are you looking forward to any resolution with some of the storylines? Well, no. Toast, you or? know, what keeps coming back to my mind is how really a very, I think, a very satisfying way. But it's, it's, it's also scary because this is real life. But it's also very satisfying because it's real life is to realize that all the cinematic and dramatic intrigue on Game of Thrones, all of the incredibly high stakes that are at risk and that are sacrificed and the wins and the losses that are represented on Game of Thrones, those types of things are actually happening in the real world that we are living in. It's happening in politics. It's happening in big business. And it's happening in the intersection of the two in our society. And the amazing thing to me is that we are a part of that very real universe that's happening all around us. And we have the opportunity to rise up and to take our place in the society and be the characters that we want to see causing things to happen for good in this society, in this universe that we live in. And I think one of the reasons Game of Thrones is so exciting and so successful is because people recognize that at a subconscious level, that this this kind of battle and this kind of uh, maneuvering and relationships and all the high stakes, that, that's actually happening. On a spiritual level, that's what's happening. So are you saying that after this last season, mm -hmm. we'll all have the time now to really show up? <laughs> well, we have the time now. <laughs> and I think if, if anybody cares about the, the very real world that we live in, then things like Game of Thrones, things like the great myths and the great stories provide a sense of comfort, a sense of orientation in the world that we live in, provide inspiration to, to be like the heroes that we see on the screen and on the page. And that's how, that's how somebody like me processes it. But yeah, because you're always looking for like some me. deep meaning. You're yeah. always looking for depth. And I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. But don't you but get you know tired? What? Like, don't you just want to have, like, just Take it at face value and have a little fun. Like, have it light. That is fun for me, though. But I understand that that's, that's just me. Well, no, I'm sure so, there are people... No, I'm sure it's not just you. I'm sure other people oh, no, uh, yeah, feel yes, that way. Yes, other people... Yes, but I guess what I'm acknowledging is, is that I realize I don't speak for everybody. So, mm. so, so for those of us who... They just want to watch dragons and swords and stuff, man. Exactly. So let them do that. Yes. Have fun with your dragons and swords. Dun, and nothing's dun, wrong with that. Dun, dun, Some people want a, you know, oh, just yeah, like I an watch, escape. Yeah, yeah. Like, let's just, mm -hmm. let's just watch a good story, a That's well done right. story. Let's, mm -hmm. you know. Let's have fun. Let's go on a ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how do you want this season to end what would be a great ending for you to walk away feeling really good okay without okay i'm gonna have to say this without ha knowing characters and stuff but i want the good guys to win whatever that means so like john snow and oh daenerys. yeah john snow that's right and daenerys yeah. well i know john snow seems to be the moral center mm -hmm. right the guy who's trying to do what he thinks is the right thing mm-hmm so I'm on Team Snow. Okay. How about you? Well, Team Snow and Daenerys, they're kind of pairing up, right? Yeah, so yeah, would you be hap would you be happy with them taking it? I think so. Because or, because who else is Okay, so here's so what we could like what could be a great ending mm -hmm. is to have Everybody, even the Lannisters, okay. just truly unite to fight against. Oh, because really, the enemy right. is the Night King. The enemy is the Night King. That's the right. enemy is not really the Lannisters. I mean, they it is, 
but they don't know because they're sneaky how bad the situation is, right? Okay, okay. And now the Night King, now that side has the dragon, mm-hmm. right? Right. So yes. now they have this other power. Yes. So they have like a Death Star. So what do you? <laughs> so what do you? Um, so wouldn't that be great? That if would somehow be great. they all united. Yes, and there was peace. Mm-hmm. But don't you think that's a little too storybook for it? Like, don't you think it probably won't end that way? I, you know, I, like, how are they going to end it? Or are they going to piss us off and end it in such an unsatisfying way and leaving open loops? Oh, God, I, I hope they don't do that. They might. Yeah, they might. It's they their right might. to do that. But I really hope they don't, you know. Yeah. yeah. So my personal, yeah, my feeling of greatest satisfaction would be yes and thank you for the reminder because yeah i my knowledge is not all there but the reminder of how the all these human kingdoms mm-hmm. are all fighting against each mm-hmm. other but they don't realize there's another enemy that there's a bigger there's, enemy yeah yeah there's <laughs> i think john snow is going to have to kill the dragon mm. with the with the dragon glass mm. i think he's going to have to do it I think it's going to be very sad. He's going to have to kill the um the white dragon, Viserion. Like the, the but he's kind of when once once um a creature becomes one of those white walker type things, it's mm-hmm. kind of like they're not their old self anymore. They're right. just right. They're kind of yeah. like just a zombie type yeah. thing. Yeah, but still, but still. Yeah. All so right. is that is that what you hope for too, though, as an ending? Like all the human beings come together. Because they realize. But here's what. I just can't see it with Cersei. Like, I can't see her doing that. So even though, you know, I love a good Hallmark ending, Mm -hmm. I just can't see it fitting here. So the alternative would be that Cersei is just saying, oh, to hell with it. I'm going to try and try and exert my force over the what is it the targaryens and all of that stuff and I mean, because she makes that choice that all the human beings just die because the night king maybe the on. night king will get her okay right and she's going to become a night walker maybe yeah or white walker white walker <laughs> a night walker is a hawaiian mythology thing okay Wouldn't no the, night, marcher. night marcher she would be pretty scary as a yeah yeah mm-hmm. All right. Anyways, happy, Game happy watching, Thrones, guys, watching. gals, folks, folks. So thank you so much <laughs> for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And until next time, this is Sienna. And this is Toast. Telling you, love life, live free.